Hello everyone, let's play some Ninja Garden. And why am I playing this? Hmm, oh that's right, Ninja Garden 3 just came out for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. Been waiting five or so years for that game. And guess what? It sort of sucks. And I feel a little bit unhappy about it. So that's why I feel like playing something else. Something to fill the void, which was Ninja Garden 3. And let's feel it! Ninja Garden 3 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, I'm gonna mention that I actually have not played this game before. <sighs> Is am I just sending myself for a train wreck? We'll see, we'll see. One of the redeeming things for me though is that I have played Ninja Garden 1 and I had finished that 15 years ago. So not only is this a test of my live commentary and my skill of play, but how well muscle memory is. <laughs> and before we get on and we uh, chase Pyramid Head's retarded brother, uh, Dome Head, Shell Head, I'm gonna call it. We'll talk about the gameplay mechanics here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay, so it's very Castlevania-like. You can tell that there's a bit of latency when it comes to attacking and you stop directing in your tracks. And you can't move unless you're jumping, obviously. A very Castlevania thing, which they have played around, as in it's the essential aspect of the gameplay in those games. And right here, you can see that it, it is exactly the same right now. Um, when it comes to attacking, you gotta be precise. You gotta know that there is a bit of lag when it comes to attacking. You can't just keep running and just swiping all over the place like... Hmm... Murasama? Murasama? Uh, or Odin Spear, if you wanna say. Whereas you can just keep running and just slashing all over the place. This one, you sort of have to analyze the whole environment before you start attacking things. And don't be an idiot like me just then. Not only that, we also have secondary weapons. Secondary weapons, very handy. Such as, like Gin, Castlevania. They're always in a position to benefit you. And I think, I don't know. This, I guess this, oh, there we go. I was just about to say. Um, we have the Arcing Fire. Um, again, that's from Ninja Gaiden 1. Which... Nicely placed right here, just to show you that you can uh, do that. Not only that, but um, just pretty much take advantage of the terrain with this weapon. Again, because we're going up a vertical shaft as well, going up, it's beneficial. Not only that, look, because we have to attack down, they give us one that shoots downwards. So you can see that all the weapons here were intentional. They weren't uh, placing things here and there and stuff like that. Obviously, it's a video game, but everything was intentional, and you can feel it. Even all the uh, all the enemies and everything. I know in the first Ninja Garden, everything was very, very, very planned to be a douche. Wait, I just want to check something. Um, it looks like ah. Uh, Sorry, I was having a look at something. When it comes to um, Ninja Gaiden 3 and the first one, I just realized that enemies don't really respawn um, off screen like the other ones. Uh, the first one, it was impossible to actually progress because things keep on respawning. In this one, they don't. And I was the same before, um, with the whole attack, how you can't move. Even though it seems a bit laggy in here and there, the controls are incredibly tight, so you can always tell that it's your fault when things happen. And because you you start to feel it um, by muscle memory, how your attacks are, you become more acquainted with it. And you learn to plan ahead and analyze the situation before you start going around hitting things and killing and whoa, whatever. Again, beautiful cutscenes um, when it comes to Ninja Garden games. It actually doesn't look like a Nintendo Entertainment System game. It actually looks like it's a SNES game. This came out in 1991. Just had a look quick look before. Which was the start of the um, Super Nintendo era. Uh, I think, uh, give or take. Might be 1992, 1991, I can't remember exactly. But, 
yeah, um, for a Nintendo game, this looks beautiful. Uh, it's so colourful. The music, think about the music, just listen to the word. Awesome soundtrack, you know. He doesn't sound like a Mega Man sort of uh, 8-bit tune, but it's awesome. The hell? And we also have our running mummies. This ain't 28 days later, but later, because they weren't mummies. I don't know why they run. I've never seen a mummy running mummy in any sort of movie. And we also have our ninja rocks and our cop the spiders. Sort of uh, the typical things that a ninja would kill on his daily lifetime. Because yeah, ninjas were so cool then that not only can they uh, fight robots, but they can shoot magic. A very com- oh man, I just realized I didn't have any more <laughs> ammo to actually spare. And the, um, these sort of sand traps are sort of uh, hindering me, as you can see. And I'm just gonna keep- uh. Have you actually noticed those three mummies? The way they were positioned? Again, that was intentional, I can tell why they did that. <laughs> If I would have kept them running, I would have been hit eventually, or if I stopped to hit him, yeah, that would have been bad business for me. <sighs> Live recording, people. Gotta love it. Okay, so let's keep playing. And we have our Medusa head sort of thing as well. They seem to be appearing and seem to be getting a lot faster <laughs> compared to the last level. Um, and we also have our... Uh, Spiky Coopers from Super Mario. And this item right here it actually extends our attack range, which makes things a little bit handy as well as allows us to attack downwards. Uh, we don't need to duck when we actually attack, which is handy because there's a bit of, I swear there's a bit of delay when it comes to actually ducking. It might be just me being a bit slow and old and. Uh, I love these games. <laughs> And that's one of the things I love about these games as well. Everything is so planned out. Think about it. Has anyone actually... Not many people talk about games in, say, the uh, 3D era, or the PlayStation 1 era, when games started becoming 3D and more extravagant with cutscenes, except for Final Fantasy VII and maybe Resident Evil. Games weren't exactly... Uh, they didn't age it well. Especially when it comes to games these days as well. Why is it that we always talk about these sort of retro games compared to... Compared to, uh, say... Um... Yeah, games in the PlayStation 1 era. Now, it's one of the things as well. I'm feeling it right now. But when it comes to actually navigating, I'm actually being extremely mindful of what I'm doing. Which is actually hurting my commentary a little bit. But... Oh! oh I touched the floor. But at least it gives us time to actually say what I was talking about. Okay. These games don't age. Let's just say that. Um, the sense of satisfaction you get from these games, where does it come from? It's the fact that everything is so well planned. And, again, when I was saying about muscle memory, you feel it in your hands. You know, there's no quick time event sort of thing where it's all the same. Uh, everything was supposed to be as it is. And you learn from it. If you keep making a mistake or something, it's not exactly hard. You actually try and figure it out yourself. Nothing is nothing is explicit to you. You figure your own thing out. Even with all of your items here as well. Like, if I didn't point it out, you probably wouldn't have known that uh, some of the actual items were intentionally... Oh, I nearly missed that um, job there. Were intentionally put there. It's so... You sort of figure it out yourself that... You should use this. Like right now, I'm so happy I got that this uh, fire sort of power up right here. Because I can do that. Yeah, handy handy. And you learn things yourself. And that's why you feel so much more involved in this game. Because you feel like you're actually in the actual situation of the character. And you directly influence uh, what's happening. You could say that uh, with, say, modern games, um, with games like, say, uh, Mass Effect, these new Mass Effect games, and that just seems to be artificial for me um, when it comes to 
um, actually learning and actually having impact from video games because it's really just changing the ending and all that jazz. This actually makes you feel it yourself. You learn from your mistakes. It's not cheap, you just gotta get better at it. And that's what I love about these games. Retro gaming in general. Ugh, I knew I was gonna do something like that. Why didn't I do anything about it? Because I'm slow in the brain. Yeah, I knew it. Oh, yeah. How's my dodging skills? Hey, I played a lot of Raiden back in the day. Anyhow, uh, we have our boss, and I actually don't know his patterns, but to be honest, it looks pretty easy. It just looks like he just fires at a figure eight, shooting things down. And I can obviously spam that, but obviously I won't have enough ammo. Oh, I'm an idiot. Don't stand directly under it. And just pretty much jump over, so, um... Because he always goes in a sort of sine wave sort of fashion anyway. As long as you jump over him, you're always in the clear. It's better to attack things when he just... When he just, uh, comes upwards, I could say. That's up you can worry about when it comes to arcing, arcing, <sighs> damn Castlevania. When it comes to sine wave sort of action uh, patterns, it's always best to attack them when they're going up rather than going down. Stage three. Okay. So. What do we have here? We were in a desert. Oops, I've got to fix my headset here. We were in a desert. Now we're in a forest. So technically we're in a biosphere of some sort. <laughs> oh no, I knew something like that was going to happen. Yeah, Castlevania dreams are coming back. Okay. Let's play this cool. Let's, how does Fonzie play it? How does Mr. Freeze play it? That's how we're going to do it. Okay, and again, they give us this power-up, and I die. Okay, <laughs> let's start concentrating now. <laughs> Me thinking too much about the commentary, not thinking too much about the game. And also, my actual controller seems to be a bit laggy. Hmm. That's just excuses, excuses. But I know they gave us this power-up as well, because I know we can attack downwards. And even better. They give us a better power-up. Yeah, see? Intentional. I want that. Keep running. I'm scared of platforming. And... I just know that a big fish is gonna come from nowhere, something, I don't know. Uh, okay. Jumping puzzles. Why do you call these jumping puzzles? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, why do people call things jump- Oh! They didn't actually think that it was going to jump that high. One more credit? Oh, Alright, one more. <sighs> Let's do this. Got my reputation to keep. <laughs> what reputation? <laughs> uh, as a Metal Gear Solid player? <laughs> <sighs> okay, one of the things I actually should mention. When it comes to modern games, there is something that you actually lose the more you play those games. Um, your sense of actual skill. <laughs> actually analyzing, actually taking in the environment. Before you leap, you must look. And that's how it should be. See, now you can tell that, you know, even by my gameplay right here, I'm having fun because I'm learning from what I'm doing. I'm actually feel more for the game that I want to get better. And I'm not saying that you can't get better with other games, but this game is kicking my ass right now and I know it's all my fault. And there's no quick time events, no crazy skills that I learned that pretty much covers the screen with all this pretty crap or whatever. This is just standard jumping. As he was. <sighs> One more run. Ah. Yeah. 
this is going to be the end of the video. Actually, I was paying attention to the time as well. Um, I knew I had to rush things a little bit. But thanks for watching. And this is my live commentary. S just practicing how things are going with my commentary and playing games. I lose 80% of my skill anyway when it comes to playing these games while talking. So hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.